Willoughby's lower North Shore seat in Sydney, very, um, very safe conservative seat. It's, um, it's on Saturday night, we didn't have a preference count, the Electoral Commission counted the wrong candidate. So on the numbers we had on the night, Tim James, in the Liberal candidate, his first preference vote had fallen deeply to 43.5%. Our estimate of preferences came out at 53 and a half after preferences. We left it in doubt, but it didn't look like it was going to be close. What happened yesterday was the Electoral Commission started to release new preference counts based on the correct pairing of candidates. There's an independent called Larissa Penn running. She got over 30 percent of the vote. She was campaigning on some local issues to do with the building of the second half of the primary vote. Yeah, yeah. of the primary vote. Yeah. Um, the preference count we got indicated that there was only about 10% of preferences flowing to the Liberal candidate, Tim James. So with those new estimates, the, the margin dropped from the result for the Liberal Party after preferences dropped from 53.5 to 51.9, which is where it will remain through the rest of the counting today. So it's just narrowed because of we have a preference count. Now, this, the swing was against the, the government on the weekend. Look, Tim James comes from the right of the Liberal Party. Gladys Berejiklian was a moderate. They rejected two moderate candidates for a right candidate. So there was some animosity within branches of the Liberal Party of this. Plus, it was a male replacing a woman. There were these local issues, and so that's sort of built up to produce this big swing against the Liberal Party in the seat. Now, the thing I would say, which is why it has federal implications, I mean, see, I think the Liberal Party will still win this seat. Oh, right. What's okay. going to happen is that um, there's just as many votes still to be counted as postal votes. For these by-elections, every voter was sent a postal vote. So we've got all the pre-polls and posts and on-the-day votes, and it's only 37% of the turnout. There'll be just as many votes still to be counted as postal votes. I don't, I don't expect them to be any radical difference from the postal votes, so I'd still expect Tim James to win this for the Liberal Party. But what it shows is that this was an independent with a very short campaign, without much financial backing, and she has run the Liberal Party a close race in a very safe seat. This seat takes up roughly half of the federal seat of North Sydney, where there is an independent running against Trent Zimmerman. If if a little known independent with not much, not many resources can run the Liberal Party a close race, how will other independents going who've been campaigning for longer have me more resources and a higher profile campaign? So I think that's the lesson from these elections. We didn't expect Willoughby would be the doubtful seat of these four, but that's what it looks like at the moment. And it's, uh, but it's from what you'll see, it's not really doubtful at this stage. You're, you're still pretty confident that's going to go to the Libs. Uh, when we get more preference counts today, the Liberals will still lead at the end of today. The question is, what's in the postal votes that come? Now, normally postal votes favour the Conservative parties for a variety of reasons, but this isn't just ap applied for postal votes. This is, now the last election, there was only 3.5% of the vote, or 5% of the vote in, Stratford, in Willoughby was postal votes. At this by-election, it's more than 50%. So it's not going to be at all like the postal votes from the past elections. My guess is they'll look like the on-the-day votes, which means Tim James would still win. But we, we honestly just don't know until they're counted on Saturday. So what sort of split would there have to be in the postal votes for Larissa Penn to get up? Well, the Liberal Party's on about 52% now to 48%. Um, those figures would have to be reversed. So she would have to win the postal votes with about 52%. And so there were four by-elections in New South Wales over the weekend for, for various reasons. Have you got anything else to, else to say about the other three seats? Um, Bega, which was the South Coast seat, the Labor Party won that seat. There was a big swing, about 12, 14 per cent. Now, I mean, Andrew and, and Constance... And Labor had never won the seat before? Never won the seat before. But, I mean, honestly, it's been a seat which Labor could win. It probably wouldn't win at a general election because it would devote resources to more marginal seats than Bega. But at a by-election, it's the sort of seat you could win at a by-election. Um, Monero next door was held by the National Party, a 6.5% swing, but they had a nice buffer. Those two seats are the federal seat of Ed Monero, so they're good signs for the Labor Party come the federal election. The northern part of Bega is in Gilmore, which is the seat Andrew Constance, the former member for Bega and the Transport Minister, he will be contesting Gilmore at the federal election. So I think Labor will be confident about the results they saw in Bega and, and confident in their ability to hold Gilmore. But I mean, there's a lot more to come before the federal election on Gilmore. Um, 
Strathfield, which is the inner west of Sydney, Jody McKay, the former Labor leader, Jason Yassen Lee has won that for Labor. There's a small swing to Labor in that by election. I, I think Labor might have wanted a better result than that, but yeah, they've, how, they've held How on. do you read that? Why, why there wasn't a more significant swing to Labor considering what was happening in the other seats? There was an independent Rand who got 9% of the vote and a lot of exhausted preferences there. Perhaps what you're seeing is, some, is that there's a bit of a swing in regional seats where most of the big swings have been at by elections in New South Wales recently, and maybe the, there isn't much shift in the city itself. Willoughby is a completely different contest. There was no Labor candidate. It was between the Liberals and Independent.